Hello, dear ones. It's Alice. Um, I was reading a very learned psychological treatise the other day. I think it was the topic was um, early childhood loss of uh, comforting relationships and a, a state of mind that they called paranoid schizoid something or other. Well, I'm not much for labels. <laughs> But I did find interesting some of the insights they had about the ego and the way that it develops in early childhood. And because uh, it seems that, that loss of comforting, sustaining relationships in early childhood uh, causes like um, certain, um, certain ways of relating to, to the third dimension the, of reality that are very like what everyone else, uh, all the other egos in the world are doing, but it's just slightly more exaggerated. So, so what I learned was a lesson for me as well. And uh, it was something like this. I'm going to try. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm putting my own slant on this, all right? <laughs> um, say, first I'm born, right? And one of the very first things that a baby learns is it, it learns that a certain portion of it, it sees things in a kind of cascade without any labels, without any, um, without any relational significance to its own needs, all right? Without any concept of parts being a whole, as in a whole person, for instance, of its mother, but rather one of the first, the very first things that it learns is that there's a certain portion of something that it, in its field of vision that, cre that creates a sensation of fullness in its stomach that's pleasing. Okay, and this is the 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 bonding to the to the the, the very first and very important thing that a child has to do in order to stay alive is to to bond with that instinct of suckling. That instance of suckling and, and receiving milk. Okay, so, so very early on, the child becomes in its mental, in its visual field, attached to just the look of, of that breast of its mother. And in addition, shortly thereafter, it begins to recognize when its eyes clear, it begins to recognize like a twinkle in her eye. And then, then the twinkle in the eye and the, like a smile on her lips and the, the division of her breast and the feeling of fullness in the stomach, which is pleasing. So there are three like what, what this author calls part objects that the child identifies with. Visual objects, the eye, the smile and the breast, okay? And it is a long time before the child begins to understand through a process of give and take of receiving something pleasant and losing the, that sensation of pleasantness, say by the mom walking out of the room, over and over again, say in the course of a year, the child sees the vision of these part objects, feels a pleasant sensation, and then experiences a sense of loss as the mom walks out of the room or goes about her work, right? So, say 365 days or however long, and the child begins to, to realize a sense of permanence there. And that sense of permanence is its experience of love. It, it begins to understand that the parts that it sees are actually um, a, a being, a soul, part of a soul, that that has a permanent relationship of give and take with itself. Okay, the beginning of a societal bonding. So, in the bottom of its mind though, it still has these, these part objects, okay? And on top of that, superimposed on that, is a new learning experience of, of, of a mature relationship with another being. Uh, truly a relationship of dependence at first, but as a child gets a little older, 
you know, more it comes in after t the age of two, it starts to realize that it itself is an, an independent being with free will. Okay, so then it becomes a more mature relationship. All right, so now what the gentleman in the learned psychological treatise was talking about is early childhood loss of a comforting um, relationship. And okay, let's say that in the worst case scenario, at the age of five, the child uh, um, uh, th flies into a tantrum and, as is often the case, has been experimenting with, with matches, as is often the case with young children, sets fire to the family home and all the people except for that child um, are, are killed in the fire. Where does that leave the child? Um, All right, so the, the first sense is, is that everyone is dead, everyone that I love is dead, and I killed them. Um, and the second, the second feeling, according to this understanding that I read about, is that uh, a kind of a regression to the early infant stage of part objects where, where the ego says, it's not possible, I couldn't have done that. And, and it returns to the older way of seeing things. So, so then the, the ego of the young child um, begins to imagine that the people that it sees are actually not people, but part objects, parts of its whole ego. Okay, and going through life like this, um, with this misunderstanding of things, is kind of catastrophic from the, the point of view of, of societal um, expectations. Because what happens then, for instance, is that um, the, child, the child will use and manipulate other people. And in love relationships, the child, without, without use and manipulate other people without regard for free will, because in the child's like Weltanschung, the other people are merely part uh, objects that are part of its own like self, you know, for its own gratification. And grown up in the same way, treating people in the same way. Um, further, when when this young person reaches the point of, of 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 reaching out in a love relationship, it's not uncommon for this young person to relive the childhood trauma and the and and seek to destroy the person whom it loves over and over again with new part objects, new lovers to do the same thing. Now this is a reaching out of the soul. Your soul is reaching out to remember the original wounding and come to a more mature understanding. Okay, it should be understood in that light as a, as a, a longing for the soul for healing. Um, so just so that in, you know, so that, so that we understand that kind of behavior. Uh, from the perspective of soul healing and soul love and forgiveness. And also, I think it's important to understand that, that most everybody on earth right now has to some degree some aspect of that part object identification. Some aspect of what will happen is that um, even in, in, li in living in a very secure home environment, on first love, they will be anticipating some kind of enduring relationship similar to that with the natal family that has existed so far with the natal family. But seldom is this the case. In the case of first love, because the skills are not all there for a mature relationship of, of romance, um, they're, they're, it's a process of beginning to learn those skills. And so frequently first, first love is, is, is a very intense and painful experience of complete identification and then complete loss. Okay, so, so what that leaves people with is, is a sort of a feeling that 
if they love, they will lose. All right, if they love, they will lose. And so there's like a body elemental within most of us because of the, this, this experience of failed love, of failed romance. There's a body elemental within us that says, I would like to find someone. And then it says, but if I find someone, I will lose them. <laughs> <laughs> and this is what Judy, uh, Judy Satori calls, um, what does she call that? Mm, sabotaging behavior. Yeah, sabotaging behavior. It's when we uh, give our body elementals two instructions that are contradict each other. One comes from the conscious mind, I would like to find someone. And the other comes from the unconscious mind, if I find someone, I will lose them. Uh-oh. <laughs> so it's a very simple job to, to clear all that with our body elementals because they're very programmable. They're very amenable. All they want to do is to do what we ask them to do to make us happy, right? Because after all, there are, there are own thought forms. There are our own artificial uh, elementals. So, so what we do is we say to our body elemental, we say... Um, this is what I want. And they say, yeah. <laughs> I want the perfect romantic relationship for me. And I'd like it to last for the rest of my life or as long as we both wanted to. And they'll go, oh, okay. <laughs> so walking along that road, heading in that direction and looking forward with great enthusiasm to um, some teachings by Judy Satori on that topic, no doubt along with the language of light activations. We'll see what comes up, huh? Well, wishing you all a perfect romantic relationship and talk to you later. So anyway, to get back to tying threads together, um, first I was talking about a situation of early childhood loss when a person uh, r reverts to an early um, mm, mental milieu in which there's a lack of understanding of integration of the, the parts of the visual field as a separate individual, separate people from itself. In other words, because of a, a very um, overwhelming a uh, feeling of loss and guilt. The the ego uh, of of the young child reverts to a notion that what it sees, the people it sees, for instance, most significantly, the people that it sees are just part of itself, that it is all that there is in the whole known universe, and that everything that it sees is like an extension of itself. This is a feeling of omnipresence in a way. Uh, it's a feeling that, that, that an empath gets, but in this case it's not an empathic feeling uh, because the heart chakra energy has been uh, like uh, the, the proper movement of the heart chakra energy has been um, injured somewhat or wounded by this this sensation of overwhelming loss okay so so the feeling of omn omnipresence in this instance has to do with extension of that heart energy that that wounded heart energy into uh, the situation of every person that in that per that in the purview of that of that wounded child okay so so it will reflect that soul wounding in everyone now, in the case of a person who is Claire, Claire audience or Claire um, has, what do you call it, clairvoyant, right? That person will see on the Claire realm um, people in the, in the astral realm in such a way that they seem to be reflecting that, that early childhood wounding. Now, the purpose of this is to res to allow the, the soul to clear that energy and return to proper heart heart energy functioning okay so 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 god if you will the divine grace in one's life is ever bringing to the awareness the notion the understanding the the um, reenactment 
of that wounding for the sole purpose of allowing the soul to re return to a full state of, of unconditional love. That's the reason for that. The reasoning is, is not to injure over and over again, but it's a very compassionate God that allows this to happen. But the result, if we don't pay attention to our soul learning, uh, our incarnational learning, is further soul wounding. Okay, so now's the time, you know, for everyone to just look at what's happening, right, transpiring right in the world, right in front of us right now. That's the thing that needs clearing. That's the thing that needs healing. Anything that hurts, anything that feels like suffering. Okay. So, so that's 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 to do with clearing from early childhood loss. And then the, the next thing that I talked about to do with um, lesser sensations of loss, of love, that most people do go through uh, in their first love experience. They, they tend to experience to a lesser extent the type of loss that that author was describing. And so um, their own experience as they go through life will will be the experience of relationships that are incomplete. And, and the purpose is the same. The divine grace, the divine intention, if you will, is exactly the same. To allow that person to integrate the energy of full heart chakra functioning. So, it's not like God punishing us. <laughs> it's more like God reminding us that that there is this work to do, that it's our job to do it, and 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 if we should ask, allowing us the grace to accomplish it. Well, so one thing I forgot, and that I'll mention now is that um, it, during this process of ascension, okay, uh, regeneration and renewal, actually ascension. Technically, ascension already occurred in 2012, and now we're in a pro in an age of renewal and regeneration and new creation, and we're learning to use those tools. <sighs> anyway, as we become aware of all that, how much things have changed, and the newosphere is taking a while to catch up to that. <laughs> Although it seems like the plant life and the animal life and even the rocks of Earth have figured it out, certainly the waters of new creation are, are there for us to, to take in and transform our own being with. Okay, but, but we humans, we have these mental filters that are like taking their time to catch up, right? And a lot of it has to do with these experiences of loss of love. We came from the stars. We came from a situation in which love was everywhere. You didn't have to look far for a being that could, that could meet your heart energy with its own heart energy fully open and complete. There was no such thing as, lo as loss of the sort that we experienced in the third dimension. And we decided to do this great duality experience and Boom, here we are, we're on earth and most likely the very first experience we had was an experience of loss when we opened our eyes as newborns. Quite a shock. <laughs> and then on top of that, the kind of shock of which that author spoke, the shock of new love lost, of the first love lost, a terrible experience really. I mean, as after the experience and after many years of, of romantic love experiences, we tend to look back and say, oh, first love like that. But it's not like that at all. It's a very, uh, a very difficult experience to go through for every young child. You know, we forget how gruesome it is. <laughs> and, so, and so first love, that loss, and here now, to get to the final point that actually I was, I was attempting to make. And here now, in this process of ascension, actually of becoming aware of what has already happened, the ego is faced with loss 
like no other unparalleled loss, the loss of everything known. Okay, the, the loss of the third dimension, the loss of the physical, the physicality as being true, the sense that everything is nothing but illusion, the, the actually very um, sc scary sense, like a sense of lack of safety in the notion that we can create whatever we want as reality. These things are very difficult. It's, it's the loss of the mother again. It's the loss of the mother that is everything familiar, that is everything we have ever experienced in the way of comfort, as well as discomfort, you know. It's the willingness to stand in the space where there is nothing, with the understanding that there will be, um, there will be, do the psychologists call it an integration? There will be a, that for sure what will follow is grace. And what will result is something far more beautiful than anything we've ever known before in the third dimension. But which we remember, we remember from, from those times when we were one with the divine. We were one with more one than we can imagine right now with the presence that is complete love, complete joy, complete peace. You know, these things are coming back to us now. All right. So it takes it takes it takes bravery to stand in the face of this and. And what we on the Clare Plane are experiencing amongst those, those set, set forth as the first wave of ascension is, is a similar disintegration of ego, uh, parts ident part identification of objects, um, 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 a labeling of other in in the front in the facing this this catastrophic egoic loss this ego terror this territoriality and this hostility of ego um, that are hallmarks of like what we considered to be I in the past these things all come up and they set us apart from the rest of the world and almost all people are categorizing and labeling everything other than themselves as as wrong and bad and and you know in some cases uh, it just all kinds of judgment calls and that has to do with the scariness of this of this moment in, t in time okay ha huh. so I know many of you out there are on the fence with regard to ascension is it true or is it just a figment you know so what I'm asking of you right now is to consider if you are clear and if you are troubled by the new aspheric chaos at this moment, to consider the possibility that these, that these theories that I put forth today could, could fill the bill, okay? Could step into that, that gap that, that between the, the past known and the current void and the future that will be what we create, which will be then known, okay? See if maybe the difficulty with what Tom Kenyon calls the uh, cognitive dissonance in the newosphere today has to do with ego loss, great loss of comfort, comforting relationships, you know, and uh, maybe a regression, a regression to, you know, what has been labeled, you know, uh, what it is labeled, you know, a, a, a momentary regression of the ego to a very young, infantile understanding of the universe, preparatory to gathering that courage to step into the void and, and into new creation.